Good morning, DFW. Welcome to the Jeff Curley Show. I'm Sarah Curley and thrilled to guest host the show today with Kathleen DeNoyer. Hey, Kathleen. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey, so I am so excited because we have an action-packed show today. From Instagram Cat Mom returning with her Christmas book debut, Meow, <laughs> a new fitness concept, two fabulous ladies, uh, in the commercial real estate realm. And it's always a joy to host the show for my dad when he is on vacation. And our first guest today, no pun intended, will be very memorable. And I assure you, this is going to be an awesome, awesome segment with her because she's actually a great friend. And I'm thrilled to have you today. Welcome, Lee. Thank you. It's nice to be here. It is so great to have you because you are an expert in brain health. And so it's just It's so captivating to me to be able to have you on the show and to be able to share all your expertise with all of our listeners today. Kathleen, I was just thrilled to be able to have her and meet you this morning. And it was just like we could have had a show all morning with her. (laughs) I know. We were doing the show beforehand in the lobby. It's not good. So you are the founder of the Brain Performance Center in Dallas and Irving. So tell us a little bit. Give us a little backstory about how you got started. Well, I have twin boys, and this was a long time ago because they're almost 30, but they were in the second grade, and one got hit by a car. The other one saw it, and quite honestly, I didn't know who to be more concerned with. We went to the hospital. He had a concussion. He got out. He was fine. He gets in fifth grade, and he comes to me, and he says, Mom, I have ADHD. You don't even know what ADHD is. And he says, Yes, I do. I can't remember anymore. I can't concentrate. His self-esteem had just gotten so low. So I says, no problem, I got this. And I started looking for options. And the only option that I was presented was medication, which was not my first line of treatment. And I found a neurologist in Dallas that did neurofeedback. And I saw the amazing changes that it made within him. I've been in ICU twice for brain injury. So I did the neurofeedback program, was so happy and excited by then, and I knew the gentleman well. So John, John, here's the deal. I'm going to go up to UNT and do my didactic training, and then I'm going to do my internship with you, and then I, if you're lucky, I might just work for you. And I did until 2009, when, 2007 when I started my own practice. Wow, so you have a personal tie in, you know, kind of pull back the layers for us. Why is brain health so important? Well, brain, brain health is very important because everything you do, you don't do, how well you do it depends on how your brain is working. Are you getting the right amount of energy to the right part of the brain at the right time? Is the brain sharing information the right way? What's the timing like? If you know somebody that interrupts you all the time, you may say, oh, I'm so sorry, but I just got to tell you, the timing's too fast. So I know that the holidays are coming up, and before we went on air, we were talking about just, you know, the stress levels in the holidays, and Kathleen was sharing, gosh, you know, I have family coming in town, and it's just not the same. Kathleen, share with us and our listeners today kind of what you were thinking Well, one of my big stresses that's starting to really present itself in my life is the fact that my parents and their generation, my aunts and uncles, they're they're in their 70s now. They're getting older. And the vision I have of my father that I'll carry through my life is when he's 45, 50, you know, sort of in his prime of health and brain health. And so my question is, he's 72 now. How do I deal with the fact that he's just not the same man he was when I was growing up and things are dramatically changing in our relationship? Well, and he knows that, too. Usually that produces some level of depression, some level of anxiety, and that that puts a stress on you, it puts a stress on him, and it puts an unnecessary stress on that relationship. Right. But getting the brain in a regulated state, creating change in the brain, that is not the hard part. Getting the brain to hold the change is the hard part, but it happens, and it can happen very quickly in as many as, you know, 20 sessions with using techniques like neurofeedback, neurostimulation, and cognitive behavioral therapy, because acceptance is the first step. You have to accept that he is where he is, and he has to accept that as well. That's a difficult thing for families to do, especially transitioning at this point in our lives and our relationships. I am starting to take over as the mother, even though I am just a mother of a small eight-year-old. You know, it's difficult. And so it's difficult for them. So you're telling me I could bring my dad to you and you could help extend his brain health into the many years that I'm hoping he lives further on. Absolutely. Creating neuroplasticity is what it's all about. The brain is just like the body. As we age, things change. Right. You know, those neural pathways. When you've got these neurons and dendrites wiring and firing, they're creating toxic waste. So that shuts down some of those neural pathways. 
But neurostimulation, you can get that brain where those neural pathways are starting to open up. You know, increasing the blood flow in the frontal lobes can do amazing things for concentration. So let's talk about a, a recent study that you were featured in the media about smartphone addiction could change brain chemistry. What do you have to say about that? Well, let me say first, addiction is a brain disease. Now, there's a lot of bad choices that go into that, but it is a brain disease. And, you know, it really starts before the smartphones. It starts with, I call it a screen addiction. I see families come in and they'll come in with younger children while they're waiting for their sibling to get their treatment. They'll give them an iPad. That's great until you try to take that iPad away. Oh, I've been there. And then, (laughs) then you have a major meltdown. So looking at, you know, from an addiction standpoint, there's different ways that you can address that. You can use some cognitive behavioral therapy. So you're not allowed. Most people, where do you, where's your phone when you go to bed at night? On the nightstand? Almost on my chest. Um. Uh, <laughs> sometimes it ends up right next to my pillow being plugged in, yes. Absolutely. And how many times a day do you check your phone? How many times it's an hour? It's attached to my watch, actually, apparently. I can't count that high. <laughs> so, you know, just using a little CBT to say, okay, I'm going to check my phone once an hour. And identifying special times where, like during dinner, we're all going to leave our phone in the kitchen, not next to us in our chair. But the addiction begins, and in the brain, the way the brain's wired, you know, you've got, you've got the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere, and in the middle, you've got the cingulate gyrus. And that, that's a loop, and it loops information from the back of the head where all the information is processed to the front of the head. And once, if that if brain is out of balance along that loop, once that loop starts, I need my phone. I got to check my phone. Where's my phone? Yep. That, oh, loop, yeah. <laughs> it, that loop won't stop. It loops and loops and loops. So what is some advice that you would have for all of us that are going through the cell phone addiction or maybe not even realizing that it's an addiction, but just exactly what you're talking about? Is there, what do we do? Well, I would say take some of those apps off of your phone, you know, it, check your Facebook on a computer. You don't have to have it on your phone. Turn off the notifications, maybe. Yeah, yeah turn that off helps. the notifications. <laughs> um, identify some times where you're going to have, and, you know, maybe your mindfulness is just not having your phone next to you. Limit the apps. Limit the time that you spend on your phone. Make a conscious effort and be aware. You have a, a young child. What behavior are you modeling? Exactly. And that's why when you take the iPad away, it's just a screaming fit. So it shouldn't be that way. <laughs> no, it shouldn't. But how many phones do we have out right now in the, in the studio? Well, we're capturing exciting just a radio. Few. <laughs> <laughs> so we may just have a few more minutes left with you today, Lee. But tell us a little bit more about the Brain Performance Center. Well, the Brain Performance Center is a behavioral health center dedicated to all aspects of brain health. And when I say brain health, what I mean is a regulated brain. When the brain gets dysregulated, and maybe that's because lack of sleep, maybe that's because genetics, you know, brain waves are just as genetic as how tall you are or the color of eyes that you have. So we're dedicated to improving and getting that brain into a regulated state. I encourage everybody to go check out her website. It is thebrainperformancecenter.com. And with just another minute here left, you are on Facebook? Yes, I am. If you have any questions for Lee, go ahead and uh, reach out to her. And a little bit more about the Brain Performance Center. You're in Dallas and in Irving. We are. And I would say our three biggest populations are ADHD, anxiety, and depression. We work with brain injuries. We work with, you know, OCD, a number of things. But those are our three biggest areas that we consider ourselves experts in. And then uh, just a last minute here. Um, how old, I mean, what's like your youngest patient? Do people come in at all ages? They do come in at all ages. Typically, I don't start them before five because they can't sit still. Uh, yeah. But, you know, five to 80, everybody can benefit from some good brain health. We're so excited to have you today, Lee, and thank you so much for being a guest on the Jeff Crilly Show. Wasn't she awesome, Kathleen? She's awesome. You make it really realistic, and you bring it down to a level where I can understand it. <laughs> well, thank you both, ladies. Thank you for having me. Coming up, we have the perfect guest for the holidays. Instagram Cat Mom is back with her Christmas kitten book. We're so excited. Don't go away. More of the Jeff Crilly Show coming up.